All right, good deal. Thank you all for being here. Um, disappointed we didn't finish the game on Saturday. Up 10, less than five, you should win the game. Um, no excuses, have to get better. Um, quick game recap, um, special teams, the, the, the things we didn't execute, block punt, as versus punt safe. Um, no excuse, never had that happen in 10 years being a head coach or previously. Uh, they were in punt safe and they blocked a the punt. Can't explain it, um, but we'll get that fixed. And then we got to be more consistent on our kickoffs. Um, you know, we had another kick out of bounds. I did think Mike bounced back and in the fourth quarter really kicked off well. Um, things we got to continue to do on special teams, our kickoff coverage um, has been really good. Uh, we've had to cover a bunch, but we've really been covering. We, we run well. Um, I thought the field goal team continues. We, we've got good protection there. Mike's hitting the ball well. And then we had an explosive punt return. Um, and then Ali on the fake punt, uh, him, him pulling the ball down and run. That was a really smart play by him. Um, defensively, you know, um, the negatives, we didn't have any takeaways. Obviously, the last two drives, that's what I'm sure you all are going to want to talk about. And then pass coverage and quarterback scrambles. And our issue has been reoccurring, you know, uh, and fully aware of that. Um, the things we did well, which maybe wasn't talked about at all, is we pressured the quarterback. We had 10-plus pressures. Uh, we had five sacks, I think 10 or 11 TFLs. Um, and we, when we stopped the run game, you know. Um, and, and so – and we were pretty – and played pretty well the first three series of the second half. And then the wheels came off, obviously. Um, offensively, the things we got to improve is perimeter blocking, is we left plays out there. And, and the disappointing thing, that's twice in three weeks – uh, we weren't as good versus man. We won some, um, but we had some opportunities where we didn't win that could have been game-changing plays. Um, had to kick a field goal in the red zone. And then the second to last drive of the game. The last drive of the game was mine, and I told you all after the game. This, we, the first play was good. Um, we could have got to midfield, and, and that's what we should have done. Got to midfield. We had the first dig, and then the rest of the plan just wasn't very good, and that's on me. Um, but our second last drive was poor execution. We, we had first downs on first and third down that we should have made. Uh, the things we did well, uh, we handled their movement and blitzes. You know, they basically interior pressured or slanted their, their front about every snap, and we handled that pretty well. Uh, ran the ball effectively. We completely controlled the clock. Um, we were good on, on fourth down. Um, had a couple big answers in the game. Like when the game was kind of, and we had a couple big answers. So, so happy for the guys for doing that. You know, to wrap it up is listen, we own it. We didn't get it done. It's a rivalry game, and we had it in our grasp and didn't finish. Um, we're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. We're not going to sit around and be miserable. Uh, there's people with real problems in this world, and it's not us, you know. And uh, we didn't play good enough in the game of football. And we got to get it fixed, and we will. Um, and you go to work. You go to work, and, and the mentality's got to be that. Um, we got one football game, and the focus is on Kansas. And um, at times we've shown that we're, we're a good f football team, and at times we haven't. You know, and we got to be able to defend our home turf. Um, it's Hall of Fame weekend. I'm really proud and, and proud of and happy for Rasheed Marshall, who's on our staff. Um, you know, a, a top-notch human being first and foremost, but had a great career here. And uh, to be a part of when he found out that he was getting inducted was special. Um, also, Anthony Beck, who I've got to know well, um, uh, him getting in, and then and then Adrian Morrell, also a uh, former running back here. Obviously, two great players that are that are getting in. So, want to want to make sure we recognize them uh, this week. And, and as far as the game goes, two teams that are backs against the wall. We got identical records, um, and uh, a lot of respect for Lance and his staff. Uh, they've got a really good team, and they were picked pretty high in the preseason. They were a top twenty-five team to start off. And, and they've got a good football team. They've lost two really close games, one in a rivalry game themselves. Um, I'll start with special teams. They've got a great kicker. I think he's 15 to 16 on touchbacks on kickoff. Uh, he's made all his field goals. And, they're, and they've got an Aussie punter. And, so, and they're well coached in all their units. Defensively, they're in the top 20 in the country in a lot of statistics. Uh, it starts with their D-line. They're really physical, and, and they play super, super hard. They roll some guys in there, um, but they play really, really hard. I think Tommy Dunn, their D-tackle, is playing at an at a all-Big 12 level. Um, and they're long at corner. You know, I think Kobe Bryant's been there for a really long time. Um, but I remember him in high school in Alabama. But he, uh, he's a really good player. And, and the other kids got length, too. So that's something you don't see very often. They've got, they've got length there. Offensively, 
you know, without a doubt, it starts uh, with Jalen Daniels and a ton of respect for him. I know he's thrown some interceptions, but I mean, he's electric with the ball in his hands. And then Devin Neal, the running back, all Big 12 performer a year ago. Um, and they've got depth at, uh, at receiver. Uh, Coach Grimes, their offense coordinator, shifts and motions. So we've got to be ready for that. Um, and, and they're playing cohesively up front. And so turnovers have been kind of their Achilles heel. But like I said, a lot of respect for them. Look forward to, to getting back and, and on the field. You know, can't get here fast enough, and, and we'll be ready. So, Greg, start us off there. So, I mean, you mentioned disappointment this week. How, how do you put that behind you? And maybe not necessarily you, but as yeah. the players and forget the that. Pe- the players but... will, take, will, will take whatever uh, direction I take. Um, and so, you know, you don't ignore it. You know, like um, I have the benefit of just kind of hunkering down. They don't necessarily do that. They got to go to class. They got to, you know, they're on their phones. That's how they live. Um but, you know, there's a lot of negativity, which happens, you know, um, when you play at a place where it matters, you know, um, you know, you can't have all the good without experiencing the bad. And so when you lose and you lose a rivalry game that 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 you were ahead in the, in the final minutes and there's going to be negativity. And so how you have to do it, you just have to process it. You have to own your own mistakes and you got to go about uh, playing better. And that's kind of how we're doing it. Um, but I'm not going to allow them to be miserable. I'm not going to allow them to, to hang their heads. Like, we're going to get better. We've got, we've got good players. Uh, we've got a staff that can, can get it turned, and, and we will. And that, that's how I, – I really believe that, Greg. That's not me talking in a press conference. I think they'll take whatever lead that we set um, from a staff perspective. Outside noise, is it tough for a player? No, it is. Oh, hundred percent it is, Greg. Yeah. Like, I'm not naive. I've got – I've got a, a junior in high school. I've got, you know, like I spent most of my life around this age group and it's harder now than ever. Um, but you have to, what you have to do is when things don't go as well as you want them to go is you have to hunker down. You have to deal in truths and you have to own your mistakes and that's coaches and players. You got to own your mistakes and you go about the process of getting better. And that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at. Personnel, you know, with the secondary, what, yep. can, what you can't change that obviously. What can you change? And what guys, what can you do this week? Well, what I think is- some guys they're going to get some opportunities as long as they stay healthy this week. T.J. Crandall's going to play more. Uh, Jacoby Spells, who's who feels we feel like he's close to being 100. percent He's going to play. He's going to get in the mix. Um, as far as anybody else, it, it's to be determined this week. But I think those are the two main guys at corner that that deserve to play and deserve uh, some opportunities uh, to get in the game. Is that part of the most frustrating part, though? Because going into it, I mean, Jordan talked about thinking things were going to get fixed. You talked yeah. about the Penn State game, thinking it wouldn't happen again, talking all offseason about being a deeper group. And the numbers are not yeah, showing not, that. Yeah, they're not good. I say the frustrating thing um, is the lack of consistency. And so, <clears throat> you know, we had. Was it three three and outs in a row in the in the second half? Is that am I accurate on that, Greg? Yeah. yeah. Twenty five yeah. minutes. So we had where execution was at a really high level, and even to the point where um, the big scramble that kind of opened up on the next to last drive for them, we executed that call to perfection the series before. And so that's where it's frustrating, just the lack of consistency. Um, but at the same time, like, we've also um, got to do a better job of putting our guys in position um, to make plays. And we also can't continue to reward guys who aren't playing well by continuing to play them. You know, it is a business. So, um, but if you're talking about frustration from my end, it's the lack of consistency. Um, because um, I did believe that I don't I don't try to make a um, a statement or say something just to help our guys out. If I didn't really believe that, I wouldn't have said that. Um, but we did perform better. Um, we did perform better in fall camp, but we haven't shown that in the game. You know, we're we're zero for three in those opportunities from a pass coverage standpoint. What are, what are Crandall and Spells going to bring that? that- well, here's the thing. It's just they get opportunity. 
you know, Jacoby's got experience. He had a he had a uh, significant injury in the spring, and he's been slow to come back from it. Um, but he's on track. It's not that I, I shouldn't use the word slow. He's on track, um, but it was a significant injury. Uh, he's got experience. He's made some plays um, in games, um, and then Crandall can really run. Um, he's got game experience at, at uh, Colorado State. Played against Albany. Played a series against uh, against Pitt as well. But I think it's about opportunity. You know, we we haven't played as well as we need to at that at that position. So, you know, I think that you got to continue to get give guys opportunities to go out in games. To be determined. Yeah. So, you know, the one guy that's a little bit ahead right now is Keon Washington. Uh, he was sick, so missed some time. But um, he's the one guy I think to be determined. You know, whether it's this week, but I think he's a guy that can help us this year. Strengths are the things that you've struggled with. Yeah, so, that's I mean, fair. That's fair. You, he's probably, you know, hey, he's pretty excited. He's probably pretty excited. Um, you know, he uh, he's a really good player, um, and I hate that he's missed all that time because I think it was, was it last year he was preseason All Big Twelve Player of the Year candidate, and uh, he was electric. He was electric when I think we played him in maybe a second game that he started the last time we were out there after after they beat Texas. Um, and he put on a show the last time he was here. Um, and so, yeah, you know, he, he does. I think that's, that's, a, that's a fair assessment. And we just got to get better. We got to tackle. You know, like um, if we can get the same type of pressure that we got to get pit, you feel good about it. Uh, we got to execute some of our spy calls better. And then we just got to get the guy down, you know, probably miss five other sacks that, that where we had guys and we had them in our hands. And then um, – and credit the Holstein too. Like he did a nice job. How much were you expecting Holstein to scramble and do what he did? That's what he did the first two. That's what he did the first two games too. That's really how they came back um, in the second half versus Cincinnati. Um, and so that's kind of what what their offense is. And I mean that in a complimentary complimentary way. I said this last week too. Is they they've got a receiver, a check down, and a run, and that's kind of what they've done. Um, and so we really kind of early, I think, the second series of the game, he hurt us and then really didn't and then until the last two. And that really, um, that's what kind of won him the game. How much did you have to adjust with Eddie V out? Did, was there a cause and effect with other positions there, numbers-wise at the end of the game? How were you there? You know, I thought, I thought our D-line, like I've got, I've got a lot of issues with how we play defensively, but D-line's not where it was. We, we should have finished better on the quarterback a couple times. Um, but I thought T.J. Jackson played at a really high level in his first start, um, was our most productive guy. I think Hammond Russell, who played a lot more snaps, he was really productive. Um, Sonny Redwood got a couple pressures as well. You know, so as a group, um, you know, we're, we don't have as many bodies as we had last year or as we were playing early in the year, and we miss his leadership. But I think that was a productive group. That's not where our issues are right now. Yeah, he's going to be out. He'll be out for a significant time. Um, could potentially be back uh, right at the end of the year, Greg, but it's it's going to be significant. And he's he has a red shirt year, so that's in play too. I'm sure you've done a lot of uh, self-introspection on the, on the defense. And uh, on what, uh, what, have, what have you arrived at? Is it a problem with personnel? Is it a problem with scheme? Is it uh, – do you have to go back? I know a year ago you went back and simplified. What, where are you going to go with that as far yeah. as fixing it? So I think it's a little bit of all above. Um, I think that you start – let's start because this way, anytime I'm evaluating something, I always start from the coaching perspective first. So <clears throat> we have to evaluate that, and there's schematics that we've got to do better. Um, and we got to give certain people better opportunities to be successful. Um so as I go through it all yesterday, and it's not just watching the pit game, but going back and watching us um, all together, just like Kansas has been doing since Saturday, um, there's some schematic things that we got to do better. Um, now I'm not going to get in great detail right now because um, I don't want to give Kansas that advantage, but we're not going to continue to do the same things. Um, and so that's the first piece. Then it goes to from a from a personnel standpoint. Like, we've got some guys that just are not performing as well as they need to and really as well as they're capable of. 
Um, it's not an effort deal. Like they're playing with good effort. Um, there's some technique. There's some some lack of discipline. It's not like they're trying not to do what they're asked to do, right? It's not it's not one of these one of those type scenarios. They're just not playing well. Um, and so when that happens, you got to give guys opportunities. Um, you can't continue to reward guys for not being productive. That just that doesn't work. So that's a bad precedent, uh, really, for your whole team. And then the, the last thing you look at is like, all right, how do can how do you how do you get these guys motivated? How do you? There's a mental piece of it too, as much as a physical piece. So when you look at it, it, it that's how I go about it, Bob. It's kind of go through each of those things, and and then we just got to go play. And you got to prepare, and you got to go play. Um, I, I really believe that we're better than what we've shown, but that's just me speaking right now because there's no there's no video proof of that, right? And uh, and I'm not naive on that, right? I'm not. I'm not up here trying to trying to cover up what our issues have been. They 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 are very. I'm very aware of those. You know, this this might sound crazy in a way, but because how the game was unfolding and the issues of the secondary at the time, was there any consideration at all to kind of almost letting Pitt score and then having more time on so, the offense? So yeah. So what you do on that? That's why I use those timeouts, right? So I use the timeouts. Um, had two timeouts left. I I used them. Um, to get um, to get it back. Now, the 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 hard thing about that, there's going to be some teams that I would agree with you where I'd said, yeah, we would have let them score, um, but they're not really built for a goal line situation, you know. And we stopped them on two other short yardage situations earlier in the game. You know, they had a, a third and one uh, that we stopped them. Uh, then they right or that was in the second half. In the first half, they had a third and one and a fourth and one that we stopped them. Right, so the offense, and they're doing a lot of good things, so this isn't a negative towards them, but they're not really built for a goal line. And so I still really felt like, and their quarterback went out when the helmet came off, so their quarterback went out. So I felt like, okay, hey, we got a legit chance here to stop them and make them kick a field goal. Because then I put then, then the decision's not on me, it's on him, right? Because, you know, you got to, you got to, um, but that's where the thought process was. Just to trace back a second, you said put guys in better positions, right? I feel like that gets says a lot and goes over my head, things like that. Like, what do you, yeah. what do you see specifically so there? So, I think some, some – like, so we played um, some man covers in situations um, where it's probably not the best um, situation for that player. If we had somebody else in, maybe so. But we've, play, we've played um, – and we've had some checks – that probably we don't need to have with certain individuals in the game. And that's probably about as deep as I'm going to get it on because y'all been around me long enough. I'm not going to sit here and I'm never going to be throwing any of our guys under the bus. I'm just not doing that. But there's better calls for the personnel we have. We're going to rotate. You can't in this – the way, especially the way Pitt plays, you can't play guys every single snap. It's impossible. Um, but we, we can put guys in better positions – um, and it's hard. It's hard for it's hard for the play caller. It's hard for the coach because you got to know who's in the game. Um, but we can position our guys better um, and get them some help. Neil, when you went to hurry up a couple of times, is that you catching them in, in the first snow you, you want to take advantage of, or how do you decide to, to do that? You just kind of you get in a rhythm of a game. And so I knew uh, they were subbing. Like we caught them twice on third and long because I knew they were subbing to their three down package and got them once. Should have got them twice, really. Um, and then we kind of – we mix it in, you know, like we we probably – this isn't scientific or whatever, but I'm going to say anywhere between 10 and 14 plays is kind of tempo for us um, within a within a given a given um, a game. It, it ties into some things that we do offensively. Normally pressure is – helps with your passive pass. So mm -hmm. It helps with coverage and everything else. However, uh, you've been burned this year by the quarterback – Mm -hmm. finding ways to get out of the pressure. Uh, what's, what's been the cause of that? So, couple. well, and let me go back. Like, he did a really good job, okay? Um, some some of uh, uh, Penn State's quarterback scrambles were more on us. Um, but some of the – some of what happened versus Pitt is him making a, him making a really good play. Um, and so I don't ever want to take away from that. Like he, he played, he did a nice job extending plays. Um, so for us, we're a heavy movement team up front. And what we've got to do is, is the ones that really bother you are the ones that escape to the edge. 
all right? Because that means you've lost contained, and that's where you end up having big scramble passes, right? And so anytime that we lose contain, it's basically because the guy that's the outside piece of the twist game is getting down the middle of the tackle and not on the outside, all right? That's how that happens. Um, and that, that happened, I think, maybe twice in the game on Saturday. The B-gap scrambles are hard to contend, you know, and we're not the only team that's having an issue with that. You know, like that's a that's a really hard was when the when the pocket moves up and there's an open B gap, and that's where uh, if you're in man coverage, it's really hard. You're in zone, you got eyes, so you can get and you can rally. Um, and so there's there's some ways we can get better, um, but I'm more concerned about correcting the contain. We got to we got to maintain our contain at all times. Are your linebackers playing? Because they're part of that. Yeah, yeah. they are. Um, I would say. Um, we're we're growing there. Uh, they're not they're not the they're not one of our main issues defensively. Um, I think that Trey Lathan played his best game that he's played on defense um, in the game on Saturday. Um, I think he can still trigger faster, but that was the best he's played. And Josiah Trotter continues to do like he's continuing to get better. He's as the year moves, he's gonna he's gonna keep getting better and better. I'm excited about him. He had pressure. Uh, I thought he triggered really well. Uh, made a couple big plays in the run game. Um, the only time he hurt, that he really hurts is if he's trying to do too much. And so um, – but, no, I think those – you know, Reed's done some nice things. Um, but are we playing perfect? No, but not as not as much of an issue. Yeah, he, I think – yeah, he's uh, progressing. He had he had upper injury. And so he's going through the protocol and so far so good. Yeah, he's got um, – He's kind of beat up. I don't think it's anything that's that's going to keep him out. Um, he didn't practice today. We'll see on tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to be careful with him this week. Yeah, let me give you your chance on the Wyatt Holden call after you yeah. looked at it again. Uh, is, there, is it possible to look at that and see what the official was, would say yeah. in the call? From it? So what I would say on this is um, – officiating the game is really hard like it's really really hard and I and I'll never sit up here and say we lost the game because officiate I just don't believe that ever happens um you know unless you're the the U.S. basketball versus Soviet Union or something like that you can probably blame probably blame the officials but for the most part that's not ever and that's not going to be the case um it's a really hard game to officiate um we've got a bunch of different teams in our league now we've gone to 16 teams in our league so we've got way more crews so our officiating is is more spread out um and we've got a bunch of new guys that are in our that are in our league right um so do i believe it was holding absolutely not and it was a critical critical play in the game um and but it also is a difficult play to officiate now, philosophically, where I think we should be is we should always err on not throwing. We should not err on throwing the flag. We should always err on not throwing. Now, that play is, and we teach this along with most, most offensive line coaches and most, most NFL line coaches, is when somebody, when a defensive lineman is trying to long arm you, you chop hands to replace. Now, it's the only move, not the only move we teach, but we do do that. Um, and to me is if you call holding and the defensive lineman has, has his head down, you're rewarding a negative play, you know, because the defense is not coaching that, right? Um, and in that particular play, it was really hard. I see what the center judge sees. The guy goes down and why it's on top of him. But it was not a hold. Um, he never grabbed him. He chopped his hands. He lost momentum. He went down. And then why it does what he's supposed to do. Um, and so was it a hold? I don't believe so. Do I understand maybe why it was called? I do. I don't agree with it, but I do understand. And, um, and, but just f philosophically, I just think we should always err on not throwing unless it's a really, really clear penalty. You get there's probably not specifically, but you probably had a handful of other calls you'd like an explanation for. Yeah. And that's not the first time this season you've brought that up too. Do you actually get, yeah, we get, we get good. Like I don't, Scott Draper is the administrative person for football in the big 12. He he's, he's excellent communication. Greg Burks runs our officiating. I don't have, I don't have any problem with the communication 
I was actually, I was just on the phone with Greg, and it, I do know that it's a really hard game to officiate. And, and I say this from a broad spectrum because I have kids that play sports. Like the greatest threat, and I've probably even told you all this before, and I believe this, like the greatest threat to, to sports, period, as we know it, is people not wanting to officiate. <laughs> all right. Um, and, and I see it at the youth level, high school level, and in college. Like it is like we need officials to officiate the games. And at this level and at the next level in the NFL, it is really, really hard to do. And um, and so, did they get them all right? No. Do I have a problem with our communication between Scott and Greg to me? No. When I um, do, I wish some of our our calls would have gone differently. Do I have issues with how the game was officiated in game one and game three? Yes. Um, but when you lose, those stick out a little bit more too, right? And don't my only deal is and like a. To Bob is philosophically, I think we should err on not throwing before we err on throwing the flag. So, anybody else questions? Wise turnovers. I don't know how to ask the question, but yep. you had two opportunities for picks. I think one could have been a pick six. Yeah, we dropped one. We had two. We had two opportunities, and we we missed both of them. You know, and then on one of ours, we had a guy run a wrong route, and that would have been a big third down conversion. He was in an area he shouldn't have been, um, and so that's been. You know, we've we've at times we played really well on offense this year, but we haven't. We've had more turnovers. I think Kansas is probably the same same thing. That's been kind of their Achilles heel as well. Um, and so we've got to do a better job on offense protecting it. And then when you get an opportunity, you know, those are game changing plays. We had two of them in the game. One of them would have been a pick six, I believe, um, and we didn't make those. Anybody else? All right. Thanks. <laughs>